In this episode I will tell you everything you need to know about hydrogen peroxide and its beneficial effects on the garden and plants. It is about hydrogen peroxide that you can and even should use in emergency situations to save your plants. We have a rather awkward situation here because when you notice that your plant looks like this it simply dies. The leaves wither, turn brown. They are not just yellow. I have a separate video about yellowing leaves and how to fix it, but it is simply a plant dying, suffocating, and the leaves simply turn brown and the plants disappear. Sad, I know, but every problem has a solution. You may think that here is the cure for all your gardening problems, but I suggest you think again before using hydrogen peroxide, because it has its undeniable advantages, but also disadvantages. For years I have tested all kinds of gardening methods. And today we are focusing on hydrogen peroxide, or H2O2. There are even scientific studies confirming the effects of using hydrogen peroxide in gardening. But what matters to me is how it is in practice and using this product in an average vegetable garden like mine and yours. This video will help you understand what it is all about and choose the right form of help for your vegetables. So let's get to the point. Now, the reason why plants turn brown and die is root rot, and root rot is caused by fungi and bacteria in the soil. It is also caused by excessive moisture in the soil. If the plants are watered and there is a lot of standing water in the soil, it prevents the plants from taking in oxygen through the roots, which causes the plants to suffocate. So what's to the rescue? Hydrogen peroxide. It not only kills bacteria and fungi in the soil, but also restores the oxygen balance in the soil. Hydrogen peroxide will help fight fungal diseases, viruses, and mold on vegetables. If you notice brown spots, mold growths, drying, dying despite watering, use hydrogen peroxide diluted with water. Pathogenic spores can be found both on the plant and in the soil. Hydrogen peroxide can also be used to disinfect the soil by removing pathogens from it. Well known as an ingredient in disinfectants, is now also approved for the control of microbiological pests on organic crops. This active ingredient prevents and combats bacteria and fungi that cause serious plant diseases. The first benefit of using hydrogen peroxide is that it is added directly to the soil, which kills fungi in the soil and actually stops fungi from eating plant roots. Let's look at some of the claims about hydrogen peroxide and its ability to disinfect soil, as well as aerate the soil or provide more oxygen and space between soil particles. Both of those are very interesting claims. It would be great if hydrogen peroxide could do that. But how would it even do that? How does hydrogen peroxide work? Well, it's H2O2. It's a molecular structure, very similar to water. It's just water with an extra oxygen atom, and it breaks down into water and oxygen when it comes into contact with things that it reacts with. And the things that it reacts with are actually biological compounds. It can react with bacteria, fungi, things like that. So it's possible that you don't want to have in your soil. But when I put hydrogen peroxide in that soil before I plant it, it kills everything, not just the bad stuff, but all the good bacteria and fungi. And that's not really about having sterile soil, but full of good stuff, because the minute it's completely sterilized, it's going to be recolonized. And we don't even have much control over what kind of bacteria or fungi that is. A good way to make the good ones win is to simply introduce beneficial organisms so that they have a chance to outweigh the bad ones, introduce humus and microflora. Preferably together with fertilizer, also think about introducing beneficial organisms such as Bt or Felty, beneficial nematodes or beneficent mites which can be purchased online. Ultimately, soil can be disinfected by burning it in a fire, oven or microwave, but this is more for small quantities. This oxygen is extremely reactive and acts as a small but mighty warrior. It destroys the cell walls of harmful microorganisms, such as Pythium or Fusarium fungi, which are a common cause of root rot. This action is fast and effective, making hydrogen peroxide an excellent intervention tool when we suspect an infection in the substrate. So how do I disinfect soil and plants with hydrogen peroxide? 
So I have two batches of hydrogen peroxide. The first batch is a 1 to 1 ratio of 3% hydrogen peroxide to water, and the second batch is 1 teaspoon of hydrogen peroxide to 1 glass of water. Why? Well, the lower concentration will be on the leaves, and the higher concentration will go straight into the soil around the plants. High concentrations should not touch any of the leaves, as they can burn the leaves. Hydrogen peroxide will kill fungi and this should help the plant. The second benefit of using hydrogen peroxide is spraying the leaves of your plants with a diluted hydrogen peroxide solution, which will protect your plants from pests, insects, and ants. If you want to disinfect the soil, use 3% hydrogen peroxide diluted in water in a ratio of half and half, it is the same amount of water to the same amount of hydrogen peroxide. Do not pour it on the leaves of your plants because it is too strong and the plants will burn. If you want to disinfect your plants and get rid of insects, use hydrogen peroxide and water in a ratio of 1 to 4, so it is 1 part hydrogen peroxide to 4 parts water. Such a spray also repels ants and insects. Diluted hydrogen peroxide solution, used as a foliar spray, has a twofold effect. First, its oxidizing properties make it an unfriendly environment for many small, soft-bodied insects, such as aphids. Contact with the solution can damage their delicate skin, discouraging them from feeding and breeding on our plants. It may not be as strong an insecticide as chemical insecticides, but it is a great ecological alternative, especially for small infestations. Second, and equally important, hydrogen peroxide spraying works prophylactically against fungal diseases such as powdery mildew or grey mold. These diseases thrive in a moist environment on the surface of leaves. The additional oxygen released from H2O2 creates conditions that are unfavorable for the growth of fungal spores. Regular, preventative spraying, especially during periods of humid and warm weather, can significantly reduce the risk of these troublesome diseases. Mix 1 part 3% hydrogen peroxide with 2 parts water. You can also start with an even weaker solution, 1 part H2O2 to 3 or 4 parts water, to test the plant's reaction. Before spraying the entire plant, always, but always, test on 1 or 2 leaves. Choose the less visible ones, spray them with the prepared solution and wait 24 to 48 hours. If no spots, discolorations or burn marks appear, you can safely spray the entire plant. This is a simple rule that can protect your favorite specimens from destruction. Remember to spray early in the morning or late in the evening, never in full sun, because water droplets act like small lenses and can cause leaf burns. Spray thoroughly, covering both the top and bottom of the leaves, because it is on the underside that pests and the first disease outbreaks often hide. Use a sprayer that creates a fine mist, not large drops. This will ensure even coverage and minimize the risk of the solution running off. This treatment can be repeated every week or every two weeks during periods of increased risk, but always monitor your plants and respond to their needs. Interestingly, a spray of hydrogen peroxide can also be effective in repelling ants, which often graze aphids on plants, protecting them in exchange for a sweet sleep. Ants dislike the smell and oxidizing properties of hydrogen peroxide, so spraying stems and leaves can discourage them from climbing your plants. Hydrogen peroxide is made up of the same elements as water. Water is H2O. Hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. This extra element of oxygen gives hydrogen peroxide a third beneficial property, which is vigorous plant growth. How does this happen? When hydrogen peroxide is added directly to the soil, it allows plant roots to absorb more nutrients thanks to the extra element of oxygen. This extra oxygen actually helps plants absorb more nutrients and become healthier. This aeration of the soil is key, especially in heavy, clay soils where roots often suffer from a lack of air. So the next claim is that adding hydrogen peroxide will help aerate the soil and add oxygen to it. And that's true, but then again, it's not as important for growing your plants. But if you're dealing with soil that really needs aeration, there are a lot of easier and cheaper ways to do it. 
Just take a small shovel and break up the soil a little bit so it's not so compacted. Just turn it over or dig it over before the season. You don't have to throw in a ton of hydrogen peroxide to do this. When hydrogen peroxide breaks down and decomposes, there are only two byproducts, water and oxygen. This extra oxygen helps your plants grow bigger roots and become stronger. Hydrogen peroxide is EPA approved for outdoor use. Soil that is compacted, heavy or overwatered often lacks oxygen. Roots literally suffocate in such conditions, their metabolism slows down and their ability to absorb nutrients drastically decreases. An additional portion of oxygen from H2O2 immediately improves conditions in the root zone. The fourth benefit of using hydrogen peroxide is pre-treating seeds before planting. This will prevent the seed roots from rotting and will also protect the seeds from diseases. To do this, soak the seeds briefly in hydrogen peroxide, rinse and plant. We can also disinfect diseased seeds in hydrogen peroxide before sowing in a 1 colon 4 solution, 4 hours before sowing. Longer soaking may cause the seeds not to germinate at all or the plant to grow poorly, so remember to adhere to the time and proportions. The quality of the seed and its preparation are the foundation of success in gardening. Even the best soil and the most thorough care will not help if our seeds are weak or infected with pathogens. Diseases carried on seeds can destroy seedlings before they have time to germinate. The soaking time is crucial and depends on the type and size of the seeds. For small, delicate seeds, such as lettuce or herbs, 15 to 30 minutes is enough. For larger seeds with a harder shell, such as beans, peas, or pumpkin, this time can be extended to several hours, but usually does not exceed 12 hours. After soaking, rinse the seeds very thoroughly under running, clean water. This step is extremely important to remove any traces of hydrogen peroxide that could harm the delicate sprout. They should not be stored after this procedure, as the germination process has already been initiated. This method is especially recommended for older seeds with reduced germination strength or seeds obtained from an unreliable source. It gives them an additional boost and increases the chances of success. It is also a great way to prepare seeds for plants that are slow to germinate. Of course, and here again I must emphasize, the recommendations must be followed. Soaking too long, especially with small seeds, can damage or even kill them. The fifth benefit of hydrogen peroxide is disinfecting planting containers, especially if you are using planting containers from last year or the previous crop. You can use hydrogen peroxide itself to disinfect pots, containers or tools. When you are doing pruning work in the garden, it is actually quite important to disinfect tools as you move from one place to another. Think of powdery mildew, a rather troublesome fungal disease. If I were to move the same tool from a pumpkin that has powdery mildew and transfer those spores to another plant that is susceptible, I would simply spread the disease and make my whole life harder. That's why it's recommended to disinfect tools. We can do this by soaking them in hydrogen peroxide, but studies have shown that water isn't the most effective option. Bleach, peroxide, lysol, and even Listerine rank higher. And here's another but for you. Unlike some harsh chemicals like bleach, H2O2 breaks down into harmless water and oxygen after use, leaving no toxic residue that could harm plants or soil. Hydrogen peroxide occurs naturally in rainwater and acts as a natural cleaning agent. It oxygenates the soil and water bodies, is completely non-toxic and safe to use around food, people, and animals. If you apply a higher concentration of hydrogen peroxide to the leaves of the plant, you risk burning them. You can burn the roots, but since it is necessary to kill the bacteria that cause root rot, it is a risk worth taking. Pouring a solution of water and hydrogen peroxide on the bed will help to break down the unfinished compost faster, which can contribute to plant death and the creation of pathogens in the soil. We only apply the hydrogen peroxide solution to the soil when necessary, because in addition to pathogens, it also destroys good bacteria. However, using this solution will regenerate the good bacteria, and the bad bacteria will be eliminated. 
This is an organic way to heal plants, but like anything, it should be used in moderation and when necessary. As a preventive measure, we can spray in a ratio of 5 ml of hydrogen peroxide to 200 ml of water once every two weeks. This is a simple but extremely effective method to improve the living conditions of our wards. However, and this is extremely important, we must remember about moderation and the right proportions. This is not something we should do every time we water. It is rather a rescue or preventive treatment, used once every few weeks. So when is it worth reaching for this method? When you notice that your plant is wilting despite moist soil, its growth is inhibited and the leaves are turning yellow from the bottom, but treat it as a specialist treatment, not a daily routine. In the case of plants that seem to stand still and do not grow despite good conditions, such an oxygen injection can stimulate them to further development. However, let's remember the same principle as before. Moderation is key. This is not a miracle fertilizer that will replace balanced nutrition. It is more of a supplement and support that optimizes the processes occurring in the plant. Let's use it every two to three weeks, observing the reactions of our green charges. Overzealousness can lead to root damage. High concentrations of hydrogen peroxide above 5 can cause phytotoxicity, manifested by burning leaves, inhibited plant growth, and even their death. The safe concentration of hydrogen peroxide in the soil is 0.1 to 0.5. I hope you enjoyed these 5 benefits of using hydrogen peroxide in the garden and on plants. If you like this video and find it informative, click the subscribe button and we will definitely see you in the next video.